Today we're going to talk about the female reproductive system. It will be composed of three parts. The first part has to do with the ovary and the hormonal orchestration of the reproductive process. Part two has to do with the uterine tube, uh, how things are different during the menstrual cycle and pregnancy. And part three, we will continue with the cervix and vagina, and then we'll pick up the placenta uh, and end with the mammary glands. The female reproductive system, part one, the ovary and the hormonal orchestration of female reproduction. Part one has to do with identifying different tissues, distinguishing different types of follicles, uh, and uh, in with hormonal orchestration of the process. Part two would be uterine tube and uterus. Part three would be the cervix, mammary gland, and the placenta. Here we see a female, which is this female reproductive tract. We can see uh, the breast associated with the milk production. And here inside we can see the uterus. This is the uterus. This is the fallopian tube or the uterine tubes. And this is the ovaries and through the apparel ovaries and fallopian tubes. Uh, now the female reproductive tract has several functions. One, it has to produce ova. It also has to transport not only ova but also sperm. Uh, it has to have the microenvironment uh, associated with fertilization. Fertilization occurs in the uterine tube. Implantation uh, and placenta growth is a requirement of the female reproductive tract. And nourishment and support of the offspring should a baby be produced. And if she doesn't get pregnant, or even if she has the baby and milking a baby, to repeat the entire process uh, after a baby is born. So there's multiple components of the female reproductive tract, and that's what we're going to cover uh, during this uh, presentation. Here we see the uh, two ovaries, uh, the uh, uterine tubes, and through here in the uterus, the endometrium, myometrium, and muscle layer, and the perimetrium, the cervix, vagina, um, uh, fallopian tube, or, or uh, different parts, ampulla, infundibulum, uh, is where uh, the finger like projections cover over to over to capture. Uh, the uh, the egg. So here we see the ovary and ovary on a real specimen. Uh, this is a fallopian tube here. Here's a broad ligament. Uh, the uh, ovarian ligament in through there. Uh, you see side, this is inside the vagina and there is the uh, cervix and the uterus. Uh, and the ovaries, if we take a, clicker, a closer look at the ovary, uh, we'll see a germinal epithelium which is a simple cuboidal epithelium uh, surrounding it. Below that is a, canap a capsule, a tunic albuginea capsule around there. And then we see that there is a, a medulla and the cortex. And the cortex is where you have uh, the various types of, 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 of eggs. And the most primitive one, the primordial ones, are located here. When the squamous cells becomes cubed, now you're in a primary follicle. And a primary follicle could have one layer or multiple layers, as you see. And then once a cavity, uh, uh, antrium, has developed, now you're in a secondary. So primordial, primary, secondary. And then you're in a tertiary follicle or mature follicle when you have a big antrium, a distinct uh, cumulus oophorus with a little heel that supports the egg. Uh, uh, zona pellucida has been there ever since. The primary, primary is where the zona pellucida uh, uh, surrounds the egg. And then once ovulation occurs, uh, uh, you have a corpus luteum developed. And then when that regresses, you have a corpus albicans. And that's the schema thing is what we're going to be a major thing that we do this, uh, this presentation. So you have a journal epithelium on the outside, and then you have a tunica albuginea. Uh, right in through there, a uh, thick connective tissue capsule. You have uh, medulla, which have a lot of blood vessels, and the cortex, where you have more of the uh, 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 eggs. And here we can see um, some uh, blood vessels and the medulla. 
medulla, cortex, cortex, you see, uh, and tunic abogeny and a germinal uh, epithelium. It really is not germinal epithelium, but in the beginning they thought it was, and they just kept that name. Here again, we can see the cube cells of the, of the uh, germinal epithelium, and we can see the dense connective tissue of the tunic abogenia, and we can see some uh, primordial follicles in this uh, monkey ovary, uh, and we can see some primaries. These are primaries in through there that have cube cells as opposed to squamous cells for the primordial cell ones. And so uh, basically we are seeing here the primordial and the primary one. We don't have a, a secondary one yet. So again, the schema thing is primordial, primary, secondary, tertiary or graphium follicle, mature follicle. Uh, and then uh, when this is ovulated, you get a corpus luteum, and then that ends up with a corpus abacan. So the primary uh, primordial follicle is what you're born with. And this is the oval, and through there, there's this nucleus, there's a nucleolus, and you have some connective tissue cells, the stroma cells out through there, but you have some flicker cells inside there as well. So this is a primordial one with the flatten, but whenever these become cubed like this, you're in the primary. Uh, and there's where you see the zona plusta appearing is in the, in the primary. So here we see the primary could be a single layer, could be multiple layer. And also in the primary, you get the tunica uh, intima uh, right outside the granulosa layer uh, developing uh, in through there. Secondary, you have an antrium, sometimes more than one, but ultimately it's going to be one large one. These are the uh, granulosa cells in through there. Uh, this is the egg, the zona pellucida, the nucleus of the egg. Uh, you're going to get the theca internal more developed, and they even have a theca external. And these are just modified uh, fibroblastic light cells that are in the stroma. So here we can see the uh, this is the germinal epithelium, tunic abogenium, primordial follicles, and these are uh, secondary follicles in through here, or maybe a graphium follicle at this point. And so here we can see the graphium follicle. We've got a cumulus ulcerus, a chrono radiata around the egg. Uh, you had the granulosa uh, cells uh, in through there, a thicker interna and a thicker externa. Now, the egg was first described in this drawing by a graph, the graph uh, drew the egg. He even drew the egg on top of this, but he thought that the whole thing was the egg, not just that part. Even though he did drew, draw, draw the egg, it was not it, and therefore we call it graphium follicle uh, uh, from, from his contribution. That was 150 years after sperm had been eliminated. And in the beginning, they thought the sperm were the little babies. You can see the, the drawings that were there. That, that was the main contribution through making a baby. <coughs> and here we see the primordial follicles, the primary follicles, the secondary follicles with the cumulus ufrus, chrono radiata, member granulosa, uh, thicker interna, thicker externa. Uh, the zona pellucida, uh, the egg is in here, and the granulosa cells actually interact with the microvilli project down and actually interact with the with the oocyte. Here again we can see granulosa cells, uh, the uh, zona pellucida, uh, and the egg, and in this case we actually have a crystalline structure uh, inside the egg itself. So primordial, primary follicles as we see there, and here we can see a big graphium follicle. There's a graphium follicle that's associated with, well there's one there and there's a bigger one here, uh, that we can uh, see. Secondary follicle with the antrium, uh, the uh, theca interna and the theca externa is begin, beginning to develop as well. Now, uh, if we see a follicle whose uh, the membrane granulosa cells in through there are sloughing off into the lumen, a lot of pignotic nuclei, that is an atritic follicle, one that's dying, and that's what happens to most of the follicles is that they uh, they die. They're not the one that's chosen to ovulate. And ovulation, not sure exactly how it works. Uh, there must be some enzymatic uh, digestion that occurs ultimately 
uh, to break through the tunic albuginea and then also the germinal epithelium uh, for the egg to be released onto the surface of the ovary and then picked up by the fembra that we'll talk about later on. Uh, and so again, the ovulation occurs in through here, and then uh, you get a corpus luteum develop. So the corpus luteum uh, is composed of two cell types, the, the membrane granulosa and the thick interna. And those two cell types um, either make the large cells, which is the granulosa lutein cells, or the thicker cells, which are the smaller cells as we see there. And that's what we have. This is a uh, granulosa lutein cells, and this is a thicker lutein cells, which has uh, been luteinized by luteinizing hormone at the ovulation has occurred. And so we're talking about the corpus luteum brain in through there and through there, and these are the thicker cells in through here and the granulosa lutein cells in through there again, the granulosa lutein and the thicker lutein cells. Uh, and then there's still some of the blood clot that occurred with the corpus hemorrhagium originally right at the uh, uh, ovulation has occurred. We can see these cells in the corpus luteum, a very large, a large nucleolus, as we see there, and a large euchromatic nucleus. Uh, they have lipid uh, in through there, uh, and uh, we can see uh, this is where the lipid would be, which is uh, deflected back, and a lot of smooth in the plastic reticulum associated with steroid production. They produce uh, progesterone and also some estrogens as well. When a corpus luteum regresses, you get a corpus hypocan, and that's what we have here, a corpus hypocan here and here, uh, as we can uh, see. Another corpus hypocan uh, in through there, which is regress uh, corpus luteum. Now, oogenesis is a formation and development of ova. That's what occurs. And it starts out with mitosis. This is oocytogenesis. Uh, um, and you have that oogonia occurs at. So prenatal development in most species. So before birth, uh, you have mito uh, mitosis is complete. In some animals, it continues uh, even after birth. Uh, but when meiosis occurs, it's early maturation of rest uh, in the dictate stage of prophase. So meiosis initiated before birth, uh, and then it, it, it turns off. The later development of meiosis occurs only with the development of follicles. So it doesn't occur until that particular follicle is chosen uh, to... Uh, to be prepared for ovulation to occur. And so you have a first monic division and a second monic division, and this is thrown off the first polar body or the second polar body. And here we can see the polar bodies, one inside here, and there's a second polar body. So this must be uh, in meiosis two. And so here we can see before birth, you occur, you got 46 chromosomes, which is a duplet, uh, uh, the diploid uh, number of chromosomes. And then during uh, meiosis, during the first monic division, you break down to uh, 23 and 23. Uh, and part of those are in the polar body. Uh, and then, then uh, so you have 23 chromosomes, but they're duplicated still, and they have to divide again uh, to ultimately have a single number of 20 three chromosomes that can then be matched with the egg to make 46 uh, totally again. So uh, birth is here uh, and this is where ovulation occurs. So uh, what happens is you get a mitotic activity and start meiosis is turned off. It gets with the follicle, the follicle developing, it turns on uh, and, uh, and then the first polar body is, is popped off ovulation occurs and then the fertilization has to occur before the second polar body will uh, will uh, will come out so here you can see the process you have uh, two chromosome sets um, and they're duplicated and you get crossing over to occur and the first monic division uh, you separate the duplicates um, and you pull the homologous chromosomes apart is what 
is what occurred in the first uh, division. So the number of chromosomes present in the secondary oocyte is 23 chromosomes, which is a haploid number, but it's still duplicated uh, at that at that at that time. Finally, the second monadic division is simply the pulling apart uh, of these uh, of the chromosomes uh, to uh, reduce the duplicate of the 23. And so here you can see, in this case, it would produce four sperm. Uh, but in the case of an egg, it would produce one egg uh, and three polar bodies. So myosis only occurs in spermatogenesis and oogenesis. Only time you find that. It's exchange of genetic material among the homologous chromosomes. And here you can see, this is papa and this is mama. The chromosomes are duplicated. Then there's crossovering occur at synaponema complex during the zygotene and the pacotene phases. Uh, and then the first monadic division pulls mama away from papa. Second monadic division uh, uh, reduces, uh, uh, separates the duplicates uh, uh, papa, uh, or, uh, papa or papa or mama uh, that has occurred. So you get exchange of genetic materials. You're not like your brother or your sister because you had different uh, exchange uh, of genetic materials during uh, meiosis. And so finally we put the egg and uh, the, uh, the second polar body didn't come off unless it's fertilized. Um, and so you'd be a, a zygote at that time. There are species differences uh, in what occurs in ovulation. A horse, a dog, uh, post-ovulation do you get the first polar body. So they actually ovulate a, a uh, primary oocyte, not a secondary. But the bulk of them uh, uh, have a secondary oocyte. But in both cases, you don't get the second polar body removed unless you get uh, fertilization. And if you fertilize, uh, it is a zygote. So there is no uh, spermatid equivalent. There is no ootid. There's only oocyte and a OO uh, gonia, uh, but there is no uh, OO tid like a spermatid. Here we see the polar bodies pulling off uh, in this egg. Uh, and so again, birth here uh, occurs. So before birth, you get mitosis occur. That's complete, and you start meiosis. And then during the dictate stage of the of uh, uh, the first meiotic division, you arrest uh, the uh, meiosis. And then meiosis uh, starts again if that uh, egg uh, is part of the follicle that's developing. And then uh, right after uh, ovulation, uh, it occurs, or maybe just before, it depends on the species, uh, you get the first polar body picked off and you only get the second polar body to complete meiosis if fertilization uh, has occurred. So this process of meiosis is never completed on the bulk of the eggs because they are not chosen uh, to be fertilized. And so here we can see uh, the synchronization of the uh, types of uh, follicle, primordial, primary, and secondary, as we mentioned, and the characteristics thereof. But all of these have primary oocytes. So uh, uh, they have primary oocytes, and then ultimately, uh, once ovulation occurs, uh, then you have secondary uh, oocyte, uh, and then ultimately, uh, a zygote if fertilization has occurred. And so, uh, the primary is usually what's ovulated, not in all cases, but usually it is, and then uh, uh, the uh, uh, fertilization to occur and becomes a zygote. Now, this whole process is, is coordinated by the hypothalamus. So hypothalamus has releasing factors that stimulate the pituitary, produce FSH, which causes uh, follicular development uh, to occur. And then LH also uh, aids in follicular development, but also you have a surge of LH, which causes ovulation to occur around day 14 or so. And then also that luteinizing hormone, the LH, luteinizes uh, the corpus luteum, uh, and uh, that produces progesterone, which feeds back uh, into 
or to the hypothalamus, uh, as you can see. And so the hormones LH stimulates causes the theca internal cell to produce androgens. So the theca internal produces androgens, testosterone being one of them, uh, and then estrogen is produced when FSH stimulates the membrane granulosa cells to convert these precursors uh, to uh, estradiol. So androgens produced by the, the theca uh, uh, luteal cells, and then the uh, granulosa luteal cells produces uh, the estrogens as well, <coughs> is what we say. They also produce uh, inhibin, which inhibits uh, FSH uh, to be uh, be produced. Produce progesterone. Corpus luteum produces progesterone, causes uterine gland development, and also maintains pregnancy. It also produces relaxin. Relax, uh, relaxin is important uh, for uh, parturition uh, to occur. So again, the hormonal orchestration <coughs> from the hypothalamus to the anterior pituitary LHFSH causes follicular development, ovulation to occur, corpus luteum to develop progesterone to help uh, maintain uh, pregnancy. Now these changes that occur in the ovary, of course, influence uh, the uterus as well. And here you can see the menses occurring and then estrogen causes Repopulation of the uh, the uh, uh, endometrium uh, part uh, of the uh, uh, of the uterus. Um, development of glands uh, to occur, and then uh, ovulation occurs, and progesterone with estrogens from the corpus luteum uh, helps further development uh, of the glands to be maximum. Uh, and then if a corpus luteum regresses, cor makes a corpus albicans for that one, progesterone levels drop as a consequence. Uh, the uterus goes back to the uh, to the basal state. So you have uh, ovarian uh, uh, eggs development, ovulation to occur in the middle, uh, corpus luteum, and then the corpus albicans. And here we see hormonal concentrations. Uh, LH surge is what's responsible for uh, uh, for uh, ovulation to occur, um, and in fact, that's how contraceptives work: is they prevent that LH surge, and then that way you don't get uh, uh, ovulation to occur. Uh, and then you have estrogen levels, which are higher right when the follicles are developing, right before ovulation, and then progesterone is higher. Uh, and while progesterone is higher. Uh, is where you get most of the uterine uh, uh, glandular secretions. We want to thank the many books, um, um, websites, uh, textbooks, or articles that have contributed uh, images to this uh, presentation. That's all uh, part one, the ovary and uh, hormonal orchestration of the female reproductive tract. Thank you.